we're ready for Rajiv. So today our speaker is Rajiv Hazari. He is um, he is my uh, partner in crime at uh, Charles Schwab, and we both work pretty closely together. He's a fantastic individual. I've always found him to be incredibly articulate and um, uh, smooth in his explanations of things. And so I look to him as a leader in our organization and I invited him to speak with us today. So I will allow Rajiv to take over and tell us about how he does metrics. Thank you, Jessica. All right, hi everyone. It's happy Monday. Uh, my audio is good? Yes. All right, let me go ahead and share my screen. All right, before I jump into metrics, like, uh, are you guys able to see, da, 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 da. are you guys able to see my metrics slide? It just came up. Okay. <laughs> oh, All and right. I'm sorry, Rajiv, before I, before I let you go, I forgot. Um, if you have questions about Rajiv's presentation, Put them in the chat. We're going to keep them all together um, and ask them at the end. But if something strikes you, go ahead and put it in the chat. We'll get it. We'll get it answered for you at the end. All right. So hi everyone. Um, first, Jessica and Simas, thanks for inviting me talking about the metrics. This is one of the interesting uh, part of any agile or any Scrum team or even the team who is using Kanban. So it boils down to like. If your team is into product development and they are doing in a fast way continuous developments and in order to streamline the entire delivery flow, starting from the planning to the executions to delivery into the product, into the production, you need to streamline the whole flow, right? Otherwise, always there will be disruptions and your cadence to deliver the values to the production to the end user will always be disrupted. Now, how you do that? Uh, there is a way like you can do subjectively, you can have the conversations with your teams and try to, you know, groom them and align them and try to streamline them. But that typically tends to be a little bit harder. You can do it, but it going, tends to be a little bit harder unless and until you provide the, your conversations, your, your guidance along with certain numbers, certain metrics. And that's where metrics are typically helpful. Little bit background before I delve down, uh, delve, uh, take a deep dive into at least the three primarily core metrics that I'm going to show you, which is easy to use, but it is going to be helpful in order for to streamline the whole process. These metrics has been used in our organization, predominantly for a product group, entire organization, there are 14 Scrum teams. It's a very fast paced organization. It moves like a continuous delivery happens. Every sprint, they pick up a scope, the uh, Scrum teams commit to a scope, they go ahead and complete the stories or the bugs fixes within those sprints deliver it in the productions. So it's the iterative process. Every two sprints, every, uh, sorry, every two weeks, they make sure the whole sprint scope is ready for the production deployment. So the products gets, uh, so the stories gets refined properly. If they pulled out, pull it into the sprint. When the stories are ready for development, they complete the story, they test it, they make it production ready, and then they, then go, they go ahead and deploy it in the production. So it's a very fast pace, right? And in order to streamline the themes, we use these metrics to show them how they are doing, okay? So now coming back to the metrics, what and why? So metrics helps bring the visibility to various dimensions of a product planning, helps to make informed decisions to fine tune and optimize the entire value delivery, right? Uh, to plan, execute, deliver incremental values effectively and efficiently. You, you might collect in your current day-to-day -day activities, various metrics are there, right? Typically on a very high level, I try to categorize in different category. One is the scrum level metrics, which is at the execution level, which is at the sprint level. In scrum metrics, typically you are already, aware, I mean, you might be aware of it. There is a velocity, there is a burn down chart, which shows you the metrics that how your team is actually accomplishing the sprint scope day after day within a sprint. You have the, you also use the capacity of the team in order to plan your sprint. Then you have quality metrics. How many bugs are getting identified? on those metrics helps you to streamline the development practices, right? And I started using something called story metrics in my teams uh, over past almost a year or two. And I found it very helpful where you show the team the metrics in and around the stories. That means what is the size of the story, how fast it is moving. And then I allow the team to have a conversation in and around those story metrics 
to start improving their practices that they follow in the, within the sprints. And typically I use these metrics and show them in the retrospective. So that rest, retrospective, when they look into, into the uh, what are going well and what need can be improved in the context of certain metrics, because the primary goal of a sprint is you have to define or you have to commit to a sprint goal and you have to go and write the code, right? In order to complete and make it production ready. So what eventually you're doing, you are actually planning to move your user stories or the functionalities or fixing certain bugs, which is fixing certain values, which was delivered in past sprint in order to go ahead and turn those texts or the user story text into code and make it functional uh, in your product. Then there are certain metrics, which is at the program level. In order, if you have a, uh, you're planning for a quarterly, then you need to have certain metrics in order to put your guardrail to continuously keep on adjusting your scope so that the team stays within the card. That I call typically a program increment or quarterly metrics. We use pro burn up chart. I will go through that uh, topic itself, like how the burn up chart can help you to keep your teams uh, on track. Then other metrics are of course, release metrics, frequency of release metrics, then time to market is there. There are so many other metrics you might be already aware. In today's topic, primarily what I'm going to touch upon is the story metrics. I will connect you and talk about a little bit on the velocity. You all are aware of velocity, but I will just rehash it again so that it stays fresh. And then I will connect back how the velocity typically gets used in a quarterly metrics or quarterly planning and how we use in a burnout chart to make sure whatever the quarterly planning has been uh, or the scope has been committed, it stays on the guardrail throughout the execution of the quarter. Okay. Let's move to the next one. So on a high level, as I said, story metrics, velocity, burn up chart, three different topics we'll touch upon. Okay. Coming back to the story metrics, it's a part of the scrum metrics. So what is a scrum metrics, right? How we capture it, how we utilize it for the scrum teams, how we help, we help them to identify the improvement areas and they can come up with ideas how they want to improve it. And as a scrum master, you help, you facilitate in order to get into the directions for the scrum team so that they continuously keep on improving. Tracking scrum metrics help bring visibility to various dimensions of a team effectiveness, whether it's a team's velocity, capacity, predictability, and the quality of the product. That's what the, it helps. The key metrics can cultivate awareness in the team's performance and instigate actions to change and improve. Otherwise, what happens if you don't show the metrics? It's always a, you know, subjective. Everything went well. If the, if the team is completing all the stories by, um, by end of the sprint, is it like everybody is happy? Yes, everybody is happy if you complete by the end of the sprint, but you need to observe how your stories are moving through your sprint. Maybe the team is struggling under, under the hood. They are struggling to complete those sprint scope. And if the team is uh, struggling sprint after sprint, they will get burned out. So how you get that visibility? Only you will be able to get that visibility, how your team is actually performing at the, at the lowest level, at the execution level, when you start seeing how your stories are moving, okay? With that, let's come to the next section. On a very high level, how the stories move? Story is actually written in text format, right? Your product owner comes, he writes a user story in text formats, use certain visual uh, artifacts. They go ahead and explain it over the, uh, have a conversation with the Scrum team. And then teams, what, what they do, they start refining the stories. They finally estimate it, product owner prioritize it, team goes and implement it. And then finally it booms, it gets released in the production. But when the outcome happens, it is actually in the code format, right? So you are converting a text set of requirements into code. So a lot goes happens between those two states, right? The important part to remember always is if you cannot measure anything, you cannot improve. That's the one of the core. If you, you have, if you want to improve, you have to measure it, how it is actually progressing and that will throw certain ideas. And that's where metrics come into pleasure. Now the curve, the, Question comes, how much we should measure? How much metrics we should collect? Just remember in the mind, for each team, you might have a different requirement. So just the right amount, you should track, you should capture it, and you should use it for your teams to improve, to optimize, streamline, and improve, improve continuous development and delivering pipeline of your teams. Just capture the right amount, which is required for your team and share with it. After using that matrix over the period of time for the team improvement, you might realize team has improved on that particular area. You stop collecting. You don't have to collect every day because sometimes collecting the matrix is a little bit hard. So you might collect altogether different metrics. And after some time, just as a spot check, 
on that particular area where you actually help the team to improve it, you might collect it and just to do a spot check whether the team is still on track or something is getting here and there. Again, you can use the metrics collecting and use it for this retro, or you can you know, discontinue if the team is on track, okay? With that, I will move. I wanted to give a gist of it, like in the context of a sprint, you remember it's a game of tenders, right? And this particular team is like their cadence starts on Wednesday, that's a day one, and it ends on Tuesday, that is the day 10th. And in that context, and every team has a different cadence. They are day one starts at a different time and all. In our organizations, what we have done for all these teams in order to keep on running, executing in a certain cadence, because they have dependencies on the product requirement, on the domain perspective, we wanted to have a cadence. And this is the cadence they have. In the background of all the sprint, like, apart from the coding and development, a lot of other things happens, right? You have your sprint days, like basically stand up every day. Then you have the sprint day at the org level. Maybe it has a certain days. Then you have sprint retrospective, sprint planning, refinement. A lot of meetings happens in order to keep on streamlining your sprint, plus get ready for the next sprint because your refinement is already happening. At the same time, the development team continues to keep on coding just to ensure their sprint is actually getting ready. That means the sprint scope is getting ready. So what is happening is, apart from all this other meetings or wherever they are involved in, focus still remains on the sprint scope. There are a certain set of user stories and the bugs team has committed to go ahead and deliver in 10 days. And 10 days is, it goes very fast. So in order to streamline it, it is important to see how your stories are moving because, you know, team goes and size the stories differently. They have different type of stories that comes into the sprint, right? You have the size of the story that influence how your team is progressing. You have a different type of stories. For example, a user story, which has a function and non-functional requirement that directly involves coding. But a user story, which has a spike, doesn't necessarily need to have a coding which will get deployed in the production. The spike that typically we are using in our organization is to trigger a conversation, do a research in order to identify uh, certain epics uh, solutions or certain uh, POCs they do and use that spike outcome in order to break user stories or get much more clarity on the user stories to refine it further and all the stuff. But it doesn't involve a code or testing in order to um, deliver something as part of the spike out outcome in the product in the production. Third one is the bugs. Bugs are a value which has been delivered. It, that value has certain uh, issues that needs to be uh, fixed, right? Because that's where the bug comes into picture. Those can be, uh, it might take few days or it might take longer time, it depends on the bug. But the nature of user stories is different, nature of bug is different, and all these things needs to be in, in, kept in the context in order to see how your user stories are moving, and that is very important. So that's where we, what we do is like we capture the story um, points. So what I do, for my teams what we do is like I go and Okay, so this is in context of Jira. Uh, this Jira is the tool that we use in our organizations to capture all the story movement or the scope. When the sto stories move from one state to another, when you refine, it comes with a to-do. We have our own uh, status that we have identified but on an, any very high level in order for this particular uh, conversations. On a high level, what you do, like in Jira, you have a to-do when the user story has not been started, right? And then when it starts, Teams goes and put, put it in the in progress. And when in, in the in progress, in this particular context of the, our conversations, this particular team does the development as well as the QA as part of the in progress of a story. And they manage the development and the QA task is the subtask. The in progress, once it is done, that means the story is when we develop, code review is done, testing has been done. Either manual testing, automated testing, performance testing, or whatever that is done, done, and it is ready for review. And they move that story to ready for review. That means it is now ready for the product owner to review it and give a feedback. That happens anytime within the sprint, whenever the story is ready for the product owner to review. And then finally, product owner uh, reviews it, or somebody provides or gives a demo to the product owner, and the product owner moves to the done state. So what happens is story has moved from to do when the team has not started working on it. Let's assume on the day one of your sprint, because remember all this conversation in the context of the 10 days, you have a 10 days in the sprint. That's how you have to manage, that's how you have to manage your work and that's how you have to complete it. So on day one, maybe that it has not started or maybe it is getting assigned. The stories is in to do. When the team starts picking up the stories and start working on either analyzing the stories or started writing code or the QA partner has started writing the test cases for that one, the story state changed to in progress. And once the teams accomplish the stories, it is getting to 
uh, for the product owner uh, to review. The state is changing. As you are changing the state in Jira 2, it is capturing a snapshot of which date, what time it has been changed. And that is the audit trail. You can get it from Jira. You have in a way, like you pull all the list of user stories in a query, JQL query, and you can download the history or of the, all the stories that you actually pulled it up for that particular screen. You have a field called change field, and you will get exactly which field got changed. So in the, in the context for, to capture our audit trail, we use the field called status. And corresponding to that, it gives you at what date it has changed. So I use that information to capture the audit trail, how the user stories has moved. Now with that information of the user stories, bugs that we have in Sprint, the sizing of the stories and the bugs, with the audit trail, how the stories move from different state to to-do, to in-progress, to ready for review for product owner, and when it got completed, I'm able to capture and get the how exactly the scope moved throughout the sprint. I download and put it in the tabular format, and then I what I do is I represent in a visual format for the team to start analyzing it in the retro. <clears throat> so I start plotting the graph. All right. This is one of the samples. So what you see here, I show this graph to the team in the retrospective. Okay, this is the last print you have done. This is the how your stories move. What it shows on the left-hand side, the size of the stories. On the right-hand side, you have number of days, 10 days. How many days or more than 10 days? How many days each story of different size took? Threes and uh, this green one and the blue one. This is the different number of stories are there of the same size also, right? So what was the minimum number of days that particular story uh, size of the story took and what was the maximum number of days that particular type of uh, or size of the story took, okay? The minimum and max value that you can see. So what it tells is, and also on the rightmost, I show a small table that in your sprint, what are the different type of, or the size of the stories you had? How many stories of that particular size you put pulled as a sprint scope when you were planning it. So here in our example, uh, story size of with one pointer, they had only one story. With three pointers, they had four. Five pointers, they had four. The bugs, they had only one. And that's how when they were operating, they were able to see how the stories were moving. You can clearly see the five pointers here, it is taking 17 days. That itself shows that it was a spillover. It was not able to complete within the sprint goal. And these information start having a conversations within the team. Okay, what went wrong in your sprint? What are the areas you can invo uh, improve? So that you have to identify, you have to refine your story in the right way. You have to um, size the stories in the right way. You have to pick up the right size of stories so that you have the right mix of sprint scope in order for you to utilize those standards and accomplish the sprint scope so that you can complete whatever you're committed, you are able to complete in 10 days comfortably. And you have to do it sprint after sprint, right? So here also you see like the bug, which was like one bug, still they took almost more than 10 days. So what was the issue in that? And what happens is when I show this visual one, these metrics, they go back and have the conversation specific to those uh, stories. For example, uh, here they will, so I have, so here the story informations will be there for that particular team. They will have that conversations. What went wrong on that particular story? Why it took more time? So developer will have a conversations with the QA. QA might have a certain input to that one. If the story is not getting broken down into correct um, you know, size, they have a conversations and try to identify learning from that with the product owner in, in the conversations with the retro. Overall, they try to identify what was the root cause, which didn't allow them to complete the scope uh, completely, okay? Then again, once they have the learning in this particular sprint, again, they go to the next sprint. They go ahead and again, do the sprint planning with this learn. Again, go ahead and capture that metric, same matrix I capture, again, they show it. Then again, for example, in the next sprint, again, they see, okay, they change certain things, if you see. They change number of five pointers, which was huge. And if they saw that, okay, five pointers, I'm taking almost four to let's say 70 days, that is large. If, and in, in the mind, if you remember, if you can correlate, if the size of five pointer is taking, let's say seven or 10 days, that means all these five pointers are getting completed in the end of the sprint. And what is the side effect when you're completing the stories in the last couple of days, eight day or nine day or 10 day? If you get a very late feedback from the product, no, this is not accepted. You might not have an, enough room to go ahead and come take that feedback, incorporate and go and get it done. What will happen eventually is either your reactions will be there, it will be a spillover, or you might have to create another scope 
another story you have to create to accomplish that feedback or maybe another scenario is end of the like the stories which is getting completed on 8 day 9 day 10 day if there is a last moment issue that comes up your qa partners gives you certain feedback to that particular story you might not have enough time to go ahead and do it and there are a lot of five pointers which is getting completed in the end of the sprint like 8 or 9 day 10 day so what their team did is team started reducing number of five pointers with this information so they ran like two size uh, stories with two pointers they had picked one uh so with three pointers they pick two five pointers they do through three and bugs with one and again they ran through it again they had certain learning there similar kind of conversations but again they learned something from here then again they on the third sprint again they fine tuned it they further started reducing the five pointers so that they have the right mix of stories right size of stories to continuously keep on moving through the sprint that means development is getting done it is passing to the qa team to go ahead and test it because you have to remember if they pick up lot of uh, stories which is getting completed in the end the qa team all the stories the development will be completed in the end and it will be handed over to the qa team qa team will become a bottleneck in order to avoid that one this team decided all right we have to pick up and balance it in such a way that coding when we are doing we can quickly get it done and we can ch- uh, share it with our qa partner so that they can start doing the testing of it right so they were they were learning from these sprints and trying to accommodate the right mix what of this was there this question hello If you have questions go ahead and put them in the chat we'll aggregate them for the end um just note which section we're we're on Okay similarly again another uh, sprint so that's how they started using these metrics of stories how it was moving throughout the sprint it helped them to identify where were the bottlenecks what are the practices they need to change what are the what is the size and on high level how it is influencing the speed of the stories what kind of right mix of scope they should decide right because as i said user stories of with functionality and non functional uh, involves coding that moves in a different speed then they started identifying how the spike is moving because spike also has a size but if the ask is very different it might not have a certain qa task that gives an insight all right the spike doesn't have the qa task maybe we will be able to optimize it and we will be able to utilize it in a different way so they were able to utilize and figure it out what is the right scope they want to do it okay so overall and in the last or uh, in the in the in the retros over the period of time i tried to give them a snapshot how they are doing over the period of couple of sprints so that they get the context how it is fine tuning it typically i used to always try to keep it at till 5 to 6 sprint rolling so that they don't have to look further beyond and that also it depends like if the team is started improving we can start capturing less informations but when i was actually helping the team to shape and streamline the process i was sharing all this a uh, comparison for them to look into it understand the data of those stories bugs and uh, everything and then fine tune it okay so on a high level what was the advantage of course the story matrix size and the speed influence and gives a sense of how many t- days it takes each stories to go ahead and complete it gave them the sense and understand how they have to operate what are the uh, processes or the practices they have to streamline it helps them to understand the relation between the size and the speed of user stories of bug it helps to identify the right mix of scope the team comfortably completes user stories bugs and spikes always it is there and you have to pick up the right scope and right size and the last not the least it helps to optimize various task of user stories and bug the development team qa team and the production readiness all these are different tasks that you accomplish within a sprint that needs to be properly aligned when the development is starting what are you don't want the qa team to sit on the day one because you have 10 days uh, you have to complete so what are the things that qa team can start on the day one they were able to identify for certain kind of user story for example a user story which is not involved uh let's say api users it, 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 there is a story which is actually making a change in the api it is not involved in a qa a ui related stuff the qa team can write user stories from the automation script from the day one for the api right so that's how they were able to figure it out what is the right cadence or the or the sub task they can start on the day one together developer is starting on the code analysis of the stories what are the qa tasks they want to do it and they were able to streamline and over the period of time they were able to comfortably close the sprints 
and their uh, story sizing got improved. Um, their accomplishment of the sprint score was improved and they continued using this metrics to improve it. Goal, use metrics to identify opportunities to learn and optimize the execution flow. That's the whole purpose of it. And collect the metrics, whatever is required for your team to address certain uh, part of your practices, okay? Now, once you have the understanding of the, how the story is moving and you're accomplishing your sprint goals on a, once your sprint is executed, what you get? You get the business values. That means the functionality that you intended to release for the product user. The bug fixes the value which was delivered in past sprint has certain issues. You want to fix those bugs so that the values still remain and the end user is able to use your certain functionality of your product. Spike outcomes of the your spike of your analysis, which is going to help you to break your epics um, into user stories or even to understand the user stories better, resize it, which you can, the information from spikes will help you to, you know, uh, complete that user story uh, comfortably in a sprint. And then last one is the velocity. What is the velocity of your team is important to understand. That means how, what is the rate of your uh, team that you can comfortably use in order to plan for those sprints or even plan for a quarter for that particular team. Velocity is just not how many story points that team has accomplished in one sprint because that will change. As you collect the data, you will always say some days, sometimes the same team is accomplishing stories, 20 story point of uh, work. The same team in the other next sprint, they might be completing 25. The in third sprint, they might be completing, let's say 18. On an average, you have to take that one and you collect that average of how many story points this team is able to complete, that average is actually a velocity. On a high level, what is the rate this team is capable to complete it? So velocity is amount of work team completed in past sprints, helps to estimate how much work they can do in future sprints. Now, you understand the, how we can plan your sprints, how you can execute, how you can streamline. Now there are organizations, and now of course it is required in the product development, that your focus not only starts on the sprint level, your focus is you start from year, roadmap from product roadmap, it further broken down into two quarter, like uh, half, like how many things you can accomplish in six months, uh, and then how many you can you can accomplish in the remaining six months. Then that six month period is further broken down into quarter, right? Which typically many uh, organizations call the PI planning, quarterly planning, or a big room planning. What it helps is to go ahead and plan your quarter on a high level, you can identify what is the scope of your uh, each team, because in a larger organizations where you have multiple product team integrated, where you have your product has a, a complex journey, where your architecture of your product is little bit integrated, you have a dependency or different teams. You have to plan in advance in order to get ready for your sprints in that particular quarter. So you go ahead and do the PI planning. And how you do the PI planning? On a high level, you identify different large chunk of functionality. Those are called epics, large user stories. And then you start further breaking down the user stories into high level user stories. Uh, sorry, you have to break down those epics into user stories. And then you start loading for your specific, those teams who is going to work on it. So your product owner is going to take those user stories for your team. They will work with the team on a high level. They will go ahead and size it. But you cannot randomly go ahead and load your sprints for the entire quarter. If your quarter has six sprints, so let's say every, every month you have two sprints. So you have six sprints. And if your capacity, you have seen your velocity of your team is let's say 20 story point, right? That means you can only load up to 120 story point of work in that quarter. Beyond that, if you load 200, of course there is a 80 story point of scope, which will not get delivered because end of the day, your, your team's capacity is to deliver 20 story point of work every sprint. On top of that, in a, in a six, a six sprint, you have 20 into six, right? It's a 120 stock pointer. If your product owner is loading your entire quarter with a lot of user stories with high sizing and it is coming as a scope as 200, obviously it will not be done. There are 80 stories or functionality which are at risk. As a product owner, he needs to understand. As a stakeholder, they need to understand what are those functionalities, which looks like the team won't be able to accomplish based on the past data. Those scope needs to have an early conversation so the product side with the stakeholder so that they can have an early alignment which can be delivered in the next quarter because they need to have the stakeholder conversations early before getting into the last minute reactions. What we do, this is not getting achieved. 
right? Instead of waiting till the end of the quarter to have those conversations, what it helps is when the, your quarter scope is aligned, you start something, you start using something called burn up chart. What is burn up chart? On a high level, burn up chart is a very easy, simple, intuitive visual diagram of your backlog. In this particular in this particular session, in the, for our teams, what we use in Jira, you have a version report. In the version report, uh, where you actually select a release, a fixed version of, uh, you can go ahead and select, you can create a release, a fixed version. You can tag your user stories, bugs with that particular fixed version. And in this particular, uh, what we use it for a quarter, we create a release with a start date and end date. We go ahead and tag off all our user stories and bug with that particular fixed version. And then in Jira for that particular team, we go ahead in the report, we select as a uh, version report, and then we select that particular quarterly version that we, we have tagged our scope with it. The moment you select that one, Jira goes as and plot a very nice graph, which shows what is the scope of your quarter that you have planned because you have already tagged all the user stories and the bugs. And Jira uses the story points to plot this nice graph. It gives you the view of your scope and as every day team is working on it, as the stories are getting completed, it shows you the trend that out of the scope, how many stories are getting accomplished. Then this particular graph also shows that how many stories are not estimated. All those information, Jira plots it very nicely, but on a high level, this, this is the burner chart we use. What it helps is to measure the progress, how much was accomplished, how much is remaining. It helps to identify what are the scope scripts. As an user, as a product owner, they keep on adding in the backlog. If you go to any tool backlog directly, like if in the Jira, if you go and see that, it's a very flat one. You don't get any insight. It's a representative of user story or not. If they keep on adding more scope, visually you cannot understand whether it is impacting or not. So that's why you need a visual representation. These graphs are very helpful to give that visual representation. As you add more, user stories as scope. If there's a scope keep, that means whatever you originally planned is going to take further out of your quarter because you plan for a quarter. If you're adding more scope, it might take more time to go ahead and accomplish. And this graph shows that one. Then it drives all early conversations on trade-offs. That means the scope negotiation is happening. If there is a scope creep, of course, you need to have a scope uh, conversations early with your product owner. Our product owner needs to have a scope conversations with their product managers to negotiate the scope so that they can figure it out based on the team's rate of delivery. They identify they are prioritizing the right amount of um, scope for the team so that they can accomplish it successfully. Anything else, anyway, they won't be able to accomplish for that, instead of waiting till end, end of the quarter, they can actually start negotiating what are the scope which is not required, which is not priority, let's pull it out of the quarter so that team can accomplish the quarter milestone comfortably. This graph helps the product owners, it helps the product managers, it helps the scrum master to keep a guardrail of the whole scope for the whole team so that it doesn't, the chaos doesn't happen at the execution level at the sprint level. So that the suddenly product owner doesn't come, oh, in the sprint, you deliver in 20 story point of work. Now today you have to do 30 story point. In order to avoid that kind of conversation at the sprint level, you use this burner chart at the, at the product owner, product manager and the scrum master's level to mitigate this chaosness to drill or ship it down to the, to the execution level. Okay. Last one, of course, it as a is, is acts as a guardler, guardrail. It helps you to you know early course corrections and keeps on adjusting so that the team stays on track. I just want to show you a couple of uh, easy burn up chart like as a sample that Jira plots it. For example, in this graph, what you see, the start date was 1st of September. Uh, our quarter was ending or this particular PI was ending on 21st of December. We requested the teams to go ahead and plan it, load your sprint for this particular team so that they can complete on 21st of December. But here you can clearly see for this particular team, the scope is beyond that. When they added the scope, as they are adding, uh, the Jira keeps on plotting. The more and more scope they are adding in the, in the backlog, they are sizing it, you will see the trend is going up. The blue one, it shows that how much stories the team is able to accomplish it, right? And you can see that the completion date is further beyond your 21st of December. That means it is whatever the scope they have added, anyway, based on the current accomplishment, they might not be uh, able to do it. The moment you show this 
uh, metrics information to your product owners, stakeholders, and everybody. Immediately, the ask is go ahead and figure it out. What is the functional or what is the scope which cannot be done, completed, and you can have an early trade off conversations and do it so that you can identify the scope which can comfortably be done by 21st of December, right? Next is this graphs also shows this red line. This shows these are unestimated user stories. What is the risk for? If your scope is having like, there are a lot of unestimated user story. That means, you know, the moment it gets estimated, your scope will increase. That means in the sprint, finally, there will be more stories that the team has to accomplish. And if it is goes beyond the velocity of that particular team, it will go out of your PI and this graph will start showing it so that it triggers your early conversations and help the team to stay back on the, on the track. This graph also shows these dots you see when you actually hover your uh, mouse on those particular dots, it will show you exactly what was the user story that was brought in. What was the scope creep? You see this spike step up. These are the addition of more scope that is getting added because as once your the PI planning is done, you will identify more and more work within, within when you execute in the sprint, either in the form of new user story or refining your same story, your numbers are changing. That means the story points are changing. That way you will see the graph is going up and going down. Okay, and this is a very nice graph which keeps on showing all this information and in real time you will be able to see any changes you make in the backlog and which has a scope attack to this particular API. You will see this graph the moment you access, Jira will show you that change how it is going to impact uh, your accomplishment of that quarter. And it helps you to you know, identify any improvement or any adjustment is required or not. With that last one, I just want to call out the burn up chart. It helps in the early conversation of scope negotiations due to scope creeps or impacts. It helps to manage the unestimated user story strains. It helps to have very quantitative discussions with your product and product managers on the scope creeps and impacts than a very subjective discussions and stakeholders. The moment you show the graph, there is no room for them to argue with you on any subjective way. No, no, it will not impact. When you show the graph, you say, okay, this is the trend. This is showing you it is going out, how you can actually mitigate it. That conversations, it is becomes very easy to have it with your product owner, stakeholder, or even with the leadership. And the last one, it helps these graphs or these metrics helps your team to have a guardrail for the scrum team and the organizations to stay on course instead of falling from, you know, from, from the cliff and you know, get off track. I will pause. I think we have 10 minutes, but on a high level, this was the last, uh, what I wanted to share. So on a high level, take away from today's one, metrics are very useful to have a very qualitative conversations in order for your teams to get improvement. At the scrum team level, why we already show how the story metrics can help you to have better improve your ex team's execution. Second, you understand the importance of the velocity, what exactly is the velocity, and use that velocity in your advances to plan your quarter and use the burn up chart kind of uh, uh, metrics driven um, graphical representations to drive and put a guardrail around the team for the entire uh, quarter scope uh, for the whole team as well as for the whole organization. Thanks so much, Rajiv. Yep. Uh, so far, I have four questions, so mm -hmm. I'll just take them in chronological order. Mm -hmm. uh, the first one was, how do you measure subjective met metrics like team happiness? Team happiness. Uh, so far, I, okay, I think, Jessica, you can also jump. So far, for me, the team happiness, it typically I am not able to measure it from the quantitative perspective within the string execution. So what I typically do is I do a pulse check. I do in the retrospectives, I go ahead and actually use the, what in the retrospective I do, I have as different sections, the kudos for the teams, they themselves go and vote who is else is actually helping. Uh, in, in, in order for the screen, uh, sprint success. So they, the, dev, the scrum team themselves go ahead and vote for them, each and individual, calling out exactly what are the things uh, each individual has helped in that particular stream. So what I do is I take the pulse check of it. I try to take the data from that and try to correlate with it and see whether the team is, um, is actually going to... Uh, whether team has on a, on an ongoing basis sprint after sprint, whether they are actually uh, uh, give, get, giving the due credits to other team members who is helping that, that is a one uh, measure I uh, calculate. And I also uh, capture how many sprints team has comfortably go ahead and accomplish the sprint uh, goal. That is the metrics I have seen most of the time is help 
helps us to go ahead and align it that if I see there is a lot of spillover, team is overwhelmed. And whenever I see the team is able to accomplish the sprint go comfortably, typically I've seen that when the teams come back to retrospective, I see very less uh, number of points that they highlight what are the things they need to improve. Whenever the sprint has a lot of spillover, I see a lot of improvement. That itself gets an indicator that, all right, looks like the team is facing challenges and they need you know, uh, more information, I mean, more help to figure it out. So these two metrics I capture, I uh, keep an eye on it in order to identify whether the team is happy, they're comfortably um, executing it or they need help. Thanks Rajiv. Um, I've also in the past used uh, the Tuckman's model of uh, you know, the storming, norming, performing, um, I have, I have kind of quarterly taken a pulse of the team to see if, uh, you know, where they think we are in that J curve. Um, but that's just another option for people. We'll go to the next question because we've got a couple more that came in. So do you typically estimate spikes with story points and why or why not? Okay, we do. Like in our teams, we do spike because from the spike perspective, we try to figure it out how complex it is, whether even the analysis can be done within the sprint or, sprint or not. We typically, the team wants to uh, understand it because if the spike is too complex, because if the problem statement is too complex, that will not get accomplished in 10 days, definitely that spike itself has to be broken down. And we want to give a feedback to that particular problem, to the product owner, to the stakeholder. If the problem is too large, you can put it like, you, it might not be get done within the quarter itself. In order to get those informations early, we want to size it and we want to plan it within the sprint to get a sense whether it can be, that analysis or POCs can be done within a uh, sprint or not. Awesome, thank you. Uh, next question is, it seems to me the value here is built around how much, uh, how much impact on dev. Is there a translation somewhere in Schwab where the dollar value to Schwab and or the customer is evaluated for each user story? Okay, uh, uh, we don't do it. Uh, at the Scrum level, we don't do it. It is getting uh, done at a very high level. Um, at the leadership level, they figure it out on a very large functionality, not at the story uh, level, because it's very, very hard to figure it out the dollar to the user story, that's how the execution typically it doesn't help. So they stay at, at a very high level. The dollar thing that didn't trickle it down to the execution level or the scrum level. It's a leadership level, they manage it. On, a, on the execution level, what we request them, they have the scrum teams planned for the whole year. It is, they don't work at least on the, our organizations that we are part of the shop. We work on the product delivery. We don't work on the project delivery. That once the scope is done, we dismantle the scrum team. It is not. Like, there is a specific set of teams that has been, there are scrum teams that have been set it up. For all the scrum teams for the throughout the year, what is the product priority? Go ahead and plan it and prioritize the piece of work and bring it to the team so that team can go ahead and execute it so that we can streamline the whole process. So that's why the value in, uh, of the dollar to that particular story level, we don't get to see, but we get to see the feedback from the end users, from the product owner. For these functionality, how they have measured the OKRs and KPIs, and what is the outcome it has driven. That information, the product team typically uh, give us a walkthrough and they do a very fair job. And they also give the feedback from, from the product perspective when they send it out to the end user, how the end user is rating it. So we get all those informations definitely at the team level. Awesome. Uh, next question uh, is around the burn-up chart, if you want to navigate to that slide. Is that burn-up chart for an epic or by sprints? Or how, how is it calculated? Okay, this is specifically for the sprint. This is for the user stories and bugs. So in a sprint, a, 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 we, we uh, okay, this is not at the epic level. This is for the user stories and, sp uh, and the bugs. That gets prioritized within a sprint. Yeah, we're using the the fixed ver. We we actually define a specific fixed version for the the PI, and have all of the product teams tag their user stories and bugs that should be included in that scope, yep. with that specific fixed version, yep. and it's and it's at the story and bug level, so that's what gives us these reports. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Jessica, sorry, that was me, the one uh, I posted the, that question. So actually. Um, I'm a Scrum Master for a team, and um, for for some reason, I don't see the burn-up chart um, in my Jira. So I guess it's maybe the organization-wide. Uh, maybe um, we don't have access to that chart. 
You I should have this... a version report. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So in this slide, I have what I have done it in the end, like I have captured like uh, the steps. Uh, so Jira fixed version is easy to use. Perl up chart is the concept, the tool actually uh, how we can use it. In Jira, there is something called fixed version. You can find it in the reports. If you go to reports, you will see sprint report and all those drop down. We use the fixed version. And in order to set up the fixed versions, as we called out, we create a release in Jira, right? We create a release with a start date and end date, and that you will see the start and end date for this particular release. And then that particular tag, in our case, PI4 2021, this is actually a release name, okay? And then what we do, all the user stories and bugs that has been identified this particular quarter for this particular API, we requested the team to go ahead and tag their user story in the fixed version of those user story. There is a field in Jira for the user stories and bug. They go ahead and add this particular PI4 2021. So once all the stories and bugs are tagged, you go to Jira in the reports fixed version and select this particular fixed version from this dropdown, it will plot you this graph. Only one thing you have to note if you are using Jira and this one. Jira start plotting this scope, this graph, when 10% of the scope is accomplished. Before that, it will be distorted. Once you start plotting it, don't think that, all right, it is not getting plot, something is wrong with that. You wait for the 10% of the scope to get accomplished. That means the stories, so for example, you have 100 story point of work in this whole scope. If your user, if the team has completed 10 point stories in their sprints, once they are marked as done in that particular scope, you will see the Jira is plotting this one. Until then, you it will be distorted. But after 10, uh, after that particular percent, it will start plotting this graph, okay? Okay. We do have a few more questions, but we are running out of time and we definitely respect everyone's lunch hour. Um, so a couple of these questions I am gonna put in my pocket for future sessions because I can easily see them being a much bigger topic. So. The ones I'm talking about specifically are whether we should be pointing stories and bugs, um, whether non-feature work should be represented on the sprint board. These are really, really great topics. Um, unfortunately, we just don't have time to cover them with the, with the attention that they deserve. Um, so for the last question for Rajiv, um, let's see here. Uh, a quick overview again of uh, how you review the data with the team. And then I think that'll be our last question. Any others I will capture and we'll, we'll do future sessions on them or I'll send something out with answers. Okay, two important thing. At the team level, Scrum team level, I use retrospective as a forum. I, before retrospect, getting into the res, retrospective, I collect all this data of the story that I showed you. I create those graphs in Confluence page based on the data. And in the retrospective, I show them. So in retrospective, what I show them before getting into the conversations, what went well and what can be improved, what I show how their sprint has gone through it. I show them this data. Plus I also show them the burn down chart that Jira creates for that particular stream. And once I show them the data, then I let the team to have this conversation in and around in the context of how the, they executed the sprint. That is one. The second forum is for the burn up chart. So burn up chart is primarily intended at the quarterly level. So what we use is, I use this information to have a conversation with the product owner, engineering manager, as well as in there is a forum in our, um, our organizations where the product owner, product manager, engineering manager, leaderships review this burn up chart every Thursday. So they use this one for each team just to identify if there is any any early conversations required for any particular team or not. Because at the leadership level, they understand if there are 14 teams at the organ, at the, on all this, uh, all this entire journey is interconnected. The whole, all the teams, the whole organizations will move based on the slowest team that is moving. So even if the, all the other teams like 10 teams are doing great, if there are four teams who is lagging and their scope will get accomplished, let's say uh, is at risk and which will not get accomplished by 21st December, that means as an organization, they are not able to accomplish because the certain functionality, they might not be able to, uh, call it out that they have done it. So in order to stay on track, they review it every Thursday. So these are the two forums we use this, all this data to review and keep a card rail on the execution. 
Thanks so much, Rajiv. We're already having people call for a part two of this session. So I think okay. uh, I think you have been incredibly valuable in your explanation and you've really given us some things to think about. Uh, but now it's one o'clock. We're at the top of the hour. So everyone have a wonderful rest of your day. Uh, we will be posting this to our YouTube channel, which I put the link in the chat. So uh, everyone, great, great engagement. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful day.